Hi fam, how are you? Hope you all doing well. So this is Paria from Magical Lords. If you remember, if you don't know what all is about, you can just go to my first video and understand who are Magical Lords and uh, what we are all go uh, gonna do with each other. By the way, English is not my first language, so bear with me. <laughs> yeah. This session, I want to talk to a collector artist who is a very nice inspiration in Web3 uh, and she's so great uh, with a lot of experiences uh, and we are just going to interview her and talk about her experiences, the stories and maybe some secrets, mistakes, a lot of things that she had done in this uh, market so we can understand a lot of things from this interview. Be with me to the end. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for joining me. We are here with dear Leslie and uh, we are going to have a great chat today about Web3, about story, secret, everything in community building and Web3, NFTs, anything. So uh, you should just be with us uh, maybe for one hour. So we will uh, talk a little about uh, some questions and we will get to you guys. If you have any question, you can uh, come up and after uh, we finish uh, our uh, speak, you can start and uh, get the mic and start asking your questions. So it would be a very great time and a very great uh, chance to talk with a uh, with uh, an awesome artist and a collector as well and know the visions from a collector artist uh, in this web, uh, web3 so hi leslie hi how are you today and i just want to say i love that song you were playing i really need to get that song it was beautiful yeah thank you thank you it is my favorite song thank you so how are you today? I'm so great. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm still trying to wake up. So, <laughs> but, um, but I'm here and I'll have energy. I promise. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's uh, start. Uh, I want to start with your story, Leslie. I want to know uh, when did you start your work and uh, what is your hobbies? Uh, what takes you in NFT market and some stuff like that? Okay, so um, I'll try and keep it as short as possible because it's a pretty long story. But um, so I got into photography in my early 20s. Um, originally, I wanted to be um, a photographer for Rolling Stone magazine. And um, so I asked my parents for a camera and they were kind enough to get me one for Christmas. And um, I started taking photography class. I had no clue at that point, even it, that was back in film day. So I've been around for a while and I didn't even know how to load film at that point. But um, so I started taking photography class in college and um, I ended up discovering photojournalism and decided that was my passion. And um, um, it's always been since then. And so um, I ended up uh, selling, um, I did some travel photography and actually that collection is going to be coming out hopefully soon. It's slide film back from the 80s and 2000 and the year 2000. And um, then I, I, I sold to like corporate um corporations for their headquarters for their galleries um but then i you know got married i had kids i took off for quite a while and i did like i ran a photography workshop business and um decided that you know i really wanted to it was funny my photography workshop biz, uh, tour company um i had never even done a tour with anybody and 
I was getting written up by Outside Magazine as best tour of the year and everything else. And I got all this publicity and I had never even had any students at all at that point. So it was it was really funny. But um, but yeah, so I ended up uh, saying one day, you know, uh, photojournalism is my passion. I need to start uh, doing something about this. So, um, I decided to go to Haiti. And, um, the first time I went to Haiti, I was going to do a, a story on, uh, rest of X child slaves. And this guy that had a nonprofit that, um, ran a home for, for boys, former child slaves. Well, um, there was a lady here in the in Texas where I live that also was part of it. And so she arranged, um, I gave her the money, she arranged my flight and I was gonna fly with her. Well, I got onto this forum um, on Haiti and on this, um, on this uh, children's home, on this home for boys. Um, and uh, I, I heard, on, I saw on there that the, the woman that I was supposed to go with was hospitalized because she was um, accused of fraud, um, frauding people on this nonprofit. And um, she, sorry, I'm still half asleep. So I'm trying to no remember problem, all no that. <laughs> no problem. <Go> yeah. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, um, so she was hospitalized for mental issues, and um, the guy that I was supposed to stay with that was running the children's home was arrested for sexually abusing the boys. So I'm like, well, crap, what am I supposed to do now? So um, I, I checked the airline ticket, and it was still good, so I decided to just go and I talked to these people on this forum and they were so nice to me and one guy one philanthropist who I'd never met um hooked up a fixer for me a fixer is someone you know that's really important in photojournalism world he's your eyes and your ears and he helps you with everything so he paid for that for me and then um this other guy that ran a nonprofit there um he happened to be on my same flight from Miami and um um, he ended up, I, I was going to stay at this one guest house and he was also staying there. So um, this happens a lot with Haiti, like everything falls apart and then it all just comes together for me at the last minute. So um, I ended up doing that, fell in love with the culture, fell in love with the people. Um, the guy that ran this nonprofit was just amazing. And so then um, I decided to go back to Haiti with another girl that I didn't know in person, but I had met online. And uh, we were going to go cover Carnival in Haiti. Well, then the uprising broke out. So then she backed out on me and um, I studied what all was happening and knew all the, the main people and stuff like that. So I thought, you know, I've never done photojournalism and it's my passion. I always wanted to. So I'm just going to go ahead and go. So I went by myself, um, took off, um, left my family and went um, to Haiti. And I ended up, um, long story short, I ended up... Um, going into rebel territory and um which they had it blocked off it, the rebel territory was going to eve that's where most of the rebels lived and um in fact all of them lived there and um they had the, there was only one road in there from port au prince and it was blocked off um but the rebels were letting some people in some journalists in and stuff like that uh for a certain amount of time each day so um we talked to um i was with this other couple that I hooked up with um, at my guest house and we talked our way in, they let us in. And then um, I happened to be in this one area and I see Guy Philippe and T. Will and them drive by in their, in their vehicle. And I recognize them. And um, so I flagged them down and I said, Hey, look, um, I want to tell your story. Cause I had to set myself apart from all the other journalists that were there um, because I was, you know, on my own and new. So, um, they decided to, um, a few days later after the couple went back to Port-au-Prince, they decided to hold a meeting with me. So, um, it was just me and all these guys with guns and, you know, I, uh, I was the only girl and, um, they discussed it and they decided to let me live with them. So I did. So I lived with them, um, for three weeks 
and the country was shut down. Um, I was the only journalist allowed. I was the only journalist there 24 hours. You know, the other journalists got five minutes with the guys and had to go back. Um, so um, we were we got in gun battles. Um, I saw people killed in front of me. Um, we were almost assassinated. The president sent in 17 men to assassinate, assassinate us one night. Uh, but the funny story was I, I was there staying. Um, I, I first stayed in the slums with them, and then we moved over to this, like, motel and took over that. And so it was me in the room with all these men with guns, and they turn on porno. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is it. I'm going to get raped. I know it. But they were really nice, and they treated me. The the one head rebel um, treated me like a princess, and everybody knew not to mess with me at all. Um, and so they ended up ousting the president. Um, they took over the country temporarily. Um, I was the only one allowed, only journalist allowed in when they toasted champagne to Guy Philippe on his birthday, which was the same day they took over the country. And, um, it was, it was crazy. And then, so finally the airports opened up, um, and my family didn't even know where I was at the time because I, um, there was no communications, no electricity, no nothing. So they had no idea if I was even alive. But, um, but um, so then I ended up going back um, to cover Hurricane, uh, actually it was Tropical Storm Jean at the time, which killed 3,000 people. And um, this is where things get really emotional because it was um, very traumatic. Um, the worst part of it hit Ghanaiv again, rebel territory. And um, I got in there and there were bloated bodies all around. <clears throat> oh, there were... obviously. <laughs> I know yeah. you're just getting so emotional. I don't want to <laughs> take you in a bad mood okay. in the morning, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Such a story. It's the bang bang story, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, it, it was it was it was horrible. I saw things no person should see, and um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, and then also, um, that was the time I believe I get some of my times mixed up, but that was the time I was, um, despite being in gun battles before, I was actually almost killed there that time because I went back to Port-au-Prince and hooked up with my, my girlfriend um, that was supposed to go with me the last time. And um, she and I went into City Soleil, which was very quiet because um, violence had broken out and stuff like that. And the streets were like eerily quiet. They were burning tires and um, there, but there was no one out on the streets. And um, we went in with a guy and that drove us there and he took off and left us there. So it was just she and I, and um, they started throwing rocks and big rocks and bottles at us. And then someone started shooting at us. And this was the first time that someone was actually shooting specifically at me. Um, so this one, this lady pulled us into this open aired, um, like uh, storage area. And I was ducking down under this rickety little wooden table and a big rock landed on it. And so I stood up and as I did that, a bullet ricoch ricocheted off the door. Luckily it ricocheted cause it probably would have struck me in my heart. And um, we huddled back into the, this, this corner. And the only thing I could think of was how bad is this going to hurt? Are they going to shoot me in my head or my stomach or what? Um, and and the people came and they like huddled around us and tried to get us out of there. And he's the guy started firing again, um, but they finally were able to walk us out of there. And um, and then uh, went out the next day with the U.N., got in another gun battle, um, ended up photographing some horrible things. And, you know, I decided at that point, this is if my images do not help people, then there's no point in me taking these kind of images. I'm not doing it for my sake. I'm not doing it just to do it. You know, I'm doing it to help people. 
and the world didn't care at that point. And so uh, there was no point in me being there and doing that. So um, I ended up going back home and um, I went back to Haiti one more time to cover voodoo. I think I went a total of six times, went back to cover voodoo. Um, and, and I did actually from my photo tour company, I took a couple guys with me and um, we were the rebels at that point. Uh, one of the main rebels was in hiding because he was wanted for uh, he was um, wanted by the police. Um, but he came out for us um, to interview him. And then um, after that, after we left the interview, um, apparently the U.N. came in to try and arrest him. And uh, we didn't know that. So we went the next day to go and interview uh, Metier. And luckily I had a fixer with me because my fixer found out they were coming to burn us alive in our vehicles because they thought we took we had called the U.N. So he got us out of there. Um, we ended up covering voodoo and stuff like that. But um, we felt like like eyes and ears were on us the whole time we were there. So that was the last time I went to Haiti. Um, and then I took off for. Ah, sorry, my phone was going dark. Um, I took off for quite a while and um, ended up uh, getting a divorce and um, had to make a living. So I photographed, um, didn't want to, but my friends convinced me to photograph weddings. So I did that for 14 years, traveled uh, around the world shooting weddings. So that was really cool doing destination weddings. But um, while I absolutely loved, loved, loved my clients. They let me do whatever I want. They were amazing. Um, I, I hated shooting weddings. So um, I got remarried. And um, in 2020, January 1st, I made a conscious decision to stop shooting weddings and concentrate on portraits at some point, um, which actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise because COVID hit. And all my wedding photographer friends, some of them had to close down business, their business and stuff. And it was really hard on them. Um, but so, so we were just staying home because of COVID. And and then George Floyd was killed. And, um, you know, um, it, it really, it, it was really unbelievable what happened. And um, I saw a movement happening that first week after uh, Floyd was killed and um, starting in Minneapolis. And I told my husband, I said, I need to be there. I need to go cover this. Not for, you know, news or anything else, just for myself, um, I need to be there. So we drove from Texas to Minneapolis on May 29th. And um, we arrived that night, that was the night of the fires and um, photographed the fires. That was the first time I was tear gassed and then went on to cover. Um, and, and then I got back in, my friend said, you know, you need to publish this work. So I decided to get back with Zuma Press and um, we ended up covering, my husband and I ended up covering 17 protests across the nation in 2020. We also covered four hurricanes that year and um, or three hurricanes that year and one the next year, something like that. I don't remember, but um, ended up getting published worldwide quite a bit. Um, but that doesn't pay the bills. Um, it, it's very little money. And um, despite the fact you're risking your life, and I was tear gassed so many times. Um, but uh, so then I discovered NFTs. So um, I, I started, I saw Doppler Jess um, was posting about NFTs. I'm like, what the heck is an NFT? And so I kind of followed NFT people and stuff. But at the time, it was a lot of PFPs and stuff like that. And I didn't understand. I knew Doppler Jess because I'm a storm chaser as well. I knew she did photograph storms and stuff like that. And, you know, we, and um, I couldn't understand how that related to photography, but she seemed to be doing really well. And so um, I kind of just blew it off because I didn't get it at all. But um, finally, mid-November, I'm like, OK, I, ne I need to get into this. You know, she, she's making some serious money, although she always seemed to be broke, which never I never understood at the time. Now I get it um, because she was also buying. And so she was using all her money 
and putting it back into the community. Um, but but yeah, so I minted my first pieces on December 1st, had no clue still what an NFT was when I minted, um, had to give a talk in January on NFTs. I still had no clue what an NFT was or why people would want to buy it, but I knew that they I had made sales and people were buying it. So when I gave the talk, I actually had to um, look up and and try and figure out exactly what an NFT was. And luckily, Lindsay Adler, uh, who's a, a very big uh, photographer, she made a very simple series about NFTs and her journey through them. And so I finally understood it and was able to give a, a talk on it. But but yeah, so it's been a great journey. I mean, I started off with 750 followers that had been with me since I joined in 2008 and they never had any interaction with me so whatsoever. So they were really ghost followers. And um, I just, you know, I started from scratch and now here I am. So with all of you <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, I didn't uh, just expect such a story. It was amazing. And, uh, you know, mostly when we see people in this uh, space, uh, we cannot imagine what the story is uh, inside the photos uh, and their uh, collections uh, are, are hidden. And, uh, you know, we just see uh, the first impression that we get, you know, but uh, when we are just uh, start talking about their experiences, their stories, and from where they just started, we can get what happened to them, that uh, when we are seeing them so successful now, there is a very long and a huge story and experiences behind that. So, yeah, guys, because I mostly see more, a lot of you get uh, so sad these days because you don't have any sales and uh, you think you are not that successful. But you see, uh, there are a lot of experience and a lot of stories hidden there. There are a lot of sorrows sometimes, a lot of happiness uh, and a lot of things like that. So you should just go on. Yeah, that's very ins inspiring yeah. This story. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. And I, I wanna tell you guys, it has not been easy for me at all. When I first got into this, um, I knew I had to build my community, um, but um, of course I came into it because I wanted to sell. And, and I, there were, I mean, I would grind day in, day out. I mean, constantly, every single day. And, you know, when the sales, I didn't sell at first um, for like a month. And then I made three sales within the first couple of days. And then nothing again, just crickets for a long time. And, you know, people, collectors, they just weren't seeing my work and stuff like that. And I wasn't selling. So I would wake up every morning and be so excited. And, you know, um, I had my core group of, of people that would help me retweet my stuff and we'd support each other and stuff like that and grind, grind, grind all day. By nighttime, I was literally almost in tears of frustration. So I've been there. Believe me, I have been there too. So so um, it, it gets better. Um, you just have to, and, and, and you realize, you know, while you may have come in for sales, you discover this community and that's what keeps you going. It's this community, 100%. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, I see you you're requesting, but uh, I will take you up maybe in 10 minutes. Uh, let me ask some questions and uh, I will let you come up. So <laughs> don't think that I don't uh, bring you up. I see you guys. Uh, another question, Leslie. Uh, what does community mean? Can you just uh, give a definition for us? I want your vision. Uh, yeah, so community for me means... Um, a group of people that are there for you no matter what. Um, they're the people that when you need to take a mental break, they're still there for you, helping to support you. And, and you can, you feel like you can go away for a bit and take the time because you know, you'll come back and they will be there for you and vice versa. Um, and and that's to me what community is all about. And um, there are so many people in this space 
that are like that. Um, I, I've never seen, you know, I've always surrounded myself with supportive people, but it's never been on this level before of worldwide support. Um, I, I, it, it's just the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Um, absolutely unbelievable. And, um, and yeah, so, I mean, it's people with, you know, a common interest and the interest is art. And um, we're all here for it, whether you're an artist or a collector. And um, it, it's just, it's wonderful. Yeah, that was a very great definition. Uh, guys, if uh, you don't mind, please retweet this space so other people can just uh, join us and use these uh, experiences and the stories as well. Uh, another question, Leslie, for you. <laughs> I have a lot of questions today. <laughs> uh, can you just give us some maybe secrets about uh, community building? Because I think mostly we have uh, problems with that part. Um, yeah, so for me, um, you know, I started um, by sharing my work and some people would like it. And then um, I formed, I got invited to um, a, a small um, messaging group, DM group. And it was just, and, and this is how I suggest people start. Start with a small core group of people and slowly build yourself up. Um, I started with this core group of people and they were so supportive and we were all supportive of each other and we were always there for each other. So that's how I started. And then, um, you know, I would, I would go into spaces and, um, I, I went into one space and it was a big space. Um, it was para space and it's a great space, but I tried to speak in there and I literally could not breathe for like for the first month and a half, two months when I would go into spaces, I, w I literally could not breathe when I when I spoke. I was scared to death. So um, believe me, I tell you, I've been there. So don't ever let let that get to you. Um, it gets better. I promise. Um, but um, and and so like after that, I was scared to speak again in a space um, and because I totally messed up and I was just I, I literally couldn't breathe. So then um, I joined Tiba space and Tiba at the time, who now has a huge space. There were just like five of us in there. And at first it was just me and Tiba and um, it was such a small space and he was so welcoming and we just chatted and chatted. And it, that's how you get better is by going into really small spaces and getting comfortable that way and slowly building yourself up. Um, and then, um, you know, I mean, I've, I've just constantly, you know, been retweeting people and stuff like that. And my, 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 my community got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it just got huge. Um, and now I will say for me, because I, when I made my sales, um, I ended up, I don't know after how many sales I made, but I decided to buy my first NFT. Well, when you buy one, all of a sudden you're a collector. <laughs> so you get DM'd as, and buy my work, buy my work. But uh, I'm like, guys, I bought one. <laughs> so, um, but I, I will say that, the fact that I've given back to the community in that way has also really helped me a lot. Um, I do suggest you don't necessarily go on the scale that I did and, and save some for yourself. Um, especially, you know, if you need it. So, um, be, be aware of that, you know, put some aside for the community and put some aside for yourself, but, you know, um, supporting does not necessarily mean buying at all, just retweeting people's work. I mean, I, I've helped people get sales just for the simple fact that I've retweeted their work and quote tweeted their work. So, um, that's, that's something each one of us can do. Um, it doesn't cost any money. And, um, you know, yeah, I highly suggest people do that. And the more you retweet people and the more you comment on other people, then the more um, people will follow you back and you'll get added to more groups and stuff like that. And it'll just blossom from there. So and, and I will say almost all of my collectors that were not artists, I never had any interaction with at all. The only one that I had an interaction with was unknown collector. And all I did was make a comment to something that he posted. 
and I commented on it. No pictures, nothing. I just made a simple comment. He noticed me. He went to look at my work. And in fact, he even said, he said, and just like that, I noticed you. And then he went, he said, wait, uh, he said um, something about waiting till tomorrow or something like that. And then the next day he collected two for my foundation. So, um, you know, you don't have to message collectors and stuff like that. Um, eventually, if you have your community built up, collectors will find you. I promise. Wow. That was amazing. You know, mostly people start telling others some advices, maybe <laughs> that you have to make connections with your uh, collectors. And, you know, uh, especially these days, I see a lot of annoyed <laughs> collectors because uh, especially about that part. Uh, I and uh, Riyad, if anybody knows him, uh, he is uh, a collector artist as well. He is uh, calling it a um, pity party and he just uh, uh, holds uh, some spaces about pity party. Uh, you know, pity party is, uh, it means uh, sometimes you go to a space and instead of talking about your art, you start uh, nagging about all difficulties you have and <laughs> make the uh, collectors in the space maybe guilty to come and buy something from you. And uh, that is something <laughs> uh, oh annoying. Gosh, I've never heard of this. <laughs> oh my God, haven't you? <laughs> it is going so viral. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, they mostly come and say, uh, collect from me because I want to buy a laptop. My mom is uh, having some problems and, you know, a lot of stuff. But, you know, um, that's uh, important to know all of us have a lot of difficulties in our life. You have uh, heard uh, Leslie's story. It was uh, amazing, but, you know, when she was talking about uh, the situation that she experienced it, maybe years ago, she got uh, so emotional. So you see, everybody have a lot of problems uh, going to spaces or maybe messaging collectors and talking like that. It's, it's not working. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. It was amazing. And uh, is there any mistake, Leslie, that you regret you shouldn't have done before? Um, yes. Um, my... At the beginning, I made a lot of mistakes. You know, first of all, I got an invite to foundation back when it was pretty difficult to get them. Um, I got one right away um, pretty quickly. So, um, you know, I minted way before I had really built up my community. And I also minted on foundation, which I highly suggest for your first minting. If you don't know 100% what you're doing, um, possibly go somewhere else like OpenSea where you can pay one gas fee and mint as much as you want. Or if not, if you can't do OpenSea, you know, maybe go somewhere else. I don't know. But but foundation's gotten a lot better. Back when I minted, it was $150 for gas fee, U.S. dollars. So I ended up spending around $450 between minting a collection and minting and putting my pieces for sale. Um, it, it was like four. It was 150 or something like that to start the collection, plus $300 per image to mint and to list my images. So it was costing me a small fortune. And then I made $2,000 worth of mistakes that I had to go and, and correct. And even one of them actually is still a mistake on there, a mistake on the title. I left off the T in protest and I couldn't afford to correct that mistake at the time. It was so expensive. And so, you know, um, I, I should have started somewhere else. Um, also, but the biggest mistake people make, in fact, I was telling someone that messaged me today, um, you know, I'm new here. I've got this collection. It's not selling help. So I'm just like, People should have told you from the beginning, the very first step needs to be your community. And then once you've got that build up, then you need to start looking at minting your first pieces, but not until that time. And so many, many people come in here with the 
false idea that this is just, you know, a place to make a lot of money, just putting your work up immediately. And, th and that's not the case. Back, I don't know if this is still the correct number or not, but only on all of OpenSea, only 1.5% as of a couple of months ago had ever made a single sale. You know how small that is? That's a very small amount of people that have ever sold. So if you've sold anything, you're already a success here. Um, and remember that. And and, and just keep going because it takes a lot of time. It has not been easy for me to sell, sell at all. And, um, you know, I've, I've gotten lucky. I've now sold a lot. But, um, but like I said, that took some time. It took grinding. And also um, take some time off when you need it. Well, it. This community will still be here. And um, your health is and your family is – and outside world are really the most important things. Um, the space will be here. So come back when you, when you feel like you're ready to come back, but, but de definitely take the time for yourself as well. Yeah, it was amazing, amazing advice. And, you know, all of us have a lot of mistakes when we just start our work. And I myself is still experiencing a lot of things in this space after maybe seven or eight months that I'm in the market. And I think five months after my first drop. So, yeah, it is still going on and it is still on its first stages. So just uh, keep experiencing and never be hopeless. Uh, last question from me. <laughs> and uh, I will uh, take people off if you want to request because I saw a lot of requests, but uh, they just keep it back. If you want, please request the mic and come up. Join us and ask your questions or maybe chatting somehow, making connections. Yeah. The last questions for me is, uh, if you don't mind talking about pricing from artist vision and also collector vision, because mostly people have problem with pricing their art. Yeah. And art is something, I mean, I get asked about pricing a lot and I'm not really very good at pricing. Um, I never know. I started out pricing my work um, high and then I listened to collector, like I had a collector message me that wanted to buy my work and I had it priced pretty high, but I was still fairly new. And so he had, he told me and, and he messaged me, I never messaged him. And he told me, you know, since you are fairly new, even though your work is really good, you should price it at X amount or whatever, and then I'll buy it, you know, and stuff. And, you know, I did that and he bought. Um, but um, if you're new, I wouldn't start out. I mean, people think, you know, oh, one ETH, one ETH. And, and that's what I thought, too, you know, and stuff. And, and um, you know, uh, you need to build it up. So start at a somewhat lower price. Did you know that, just as an example, Justin Aversano, he has sold his Twin Flames for at least $3 million, maybe more. I don't remember. He started off at like 0 0.08 or something for his work when before he was really known. So even the big people, a lot of them started low at first until they got really known. And, and then he you know, made it to Sotheby's and stuff like that. And some people also start low because they want to make secondary sales. So also look at the secondary side of things. Um, my work is kind of all over the place. I, I did, and I've gone back and forth with my work. I've gone like, you know, from one ETH to 0.5 to 0.25 to back to 0.5. Um, I, I, you know, I've gone all over the place. I even have some at 0 0.08, you know, and um, um, you really have to think about this it's such a personal thing pricing and you need to figure out your own value and what you want to set your value at and just um and try and stick with that and don't do like i did and be all over the place with your pricing um like if you want artists to buy a lot of the artists cannot afford you know a lot a lot of um you know high prices so um that's why additions have become really big because of the fact that 
it's allowed artists to become collectors as well. So um, I, I did put out two editions and luckily they sold out, but um, I, I developed a lot of new collectors. In fact, one of them just sold today on secondary to a big collector that I've been wanting to be in his collection. Um, and I just found out about it from the person that sold it. So, um, so editions are a great way to, to get, a wide variety of collectors. Um, but, but really pricing is such a personal thing that you need to decide for yourself. Me personally, the highest I've ever spent because I'm an artist is um, 0.4, I think. Um, I, I would love to collect it one ETH, but I just can't, I, I can't, but a lot of collectors can, but you know, if they don't know you, your work's just going to sit there at one ETH when, if you price it lower at first, at least you'll start getting some sales under your belt and then you can eventually raise your prices up and up and up. Yeah, that was amazing advices. Thank you. If you have any questions, guys, you can just come up. And if uh, you're from Iran and you can speak Persian, I can help you with uh, your questions. So don't be shy and join me. Uh, hi, Ati. Do you have anything hi, to ask? Hi, Leslie. Yeah, I just uh, listened to Leslie's. Um, yep, it was great. The whole story that you said about the starting of your photography, your art journey. No, it's really inspired me. Just um, yeah, everything. It's just a but uh, and <laughs> sorry, and I also um, when you uh, uh explaining your art journey, I just looked at your artwork and you know it was amazing. And every photo of yours, it was you know, um, I I can't feel it. Everything and I realized that you. I think um um. Can I ask you a question? Do you like your, I mean, uh, me as an uh, artist, I prefer to uh, paint or photo or take a photo of uh, history or maybe society things. What do you, do, what do you more are interested in? I mean, I see your uh, photo about nature and also society and uh, politics things. What, what is the more interested for you? Um, for me personally, and I was just thinking about that this morning, um, I, I would love to collect a, a lot more photojournalism. Unfortunately, there's very few photojournalists that are here in this space and selling their work. Um, I did collect some that are not in my collection that you'll see there. I collected some from the Associated Press, um, and they don't show up on my open sea at all. But um, number one for me would be to collect more from photojournalists. Um, we, it's so important because these are historical images that need to be on the blockchain. And um, I, I would collect from photojournalists in a heartbeat. And then second for me would be documentary. But to be honest, um, I collect from all different types of types of artists if something speaks to me then i will collect it um i've bought a lot from spaces um for people showing their work and stuff like that um one artist that i just adore back and see this is the other thing with nfts back when the war started in ukraine um that was the first time I believe in history that we were ever able as a community to join forces and help support individual people, individual artists that were having to go through these horrors and help them, you know, escape and stuff like that. And, and we can also support the country itself. And we for once knew exactly where our money was going. We weren't just donating to an organization where we had no idea where the funds were going. So um, anyways, I got sidetracked on that because um, through that, I met this incredible artist named Daria. Daria is a mom. She has a young daughter and a husband and she was having to flee. And not only is she such an inspiration to me as a human being, she is also the most incredible painter I think I've ever seen. 
Um, I love her work so much and I will always collect from Daria. Um, I never thought I'd collect paintings at all or other types of artwork, but I have been inspired by so many fantastic painters and artists of all different genres. Um, I collected one yesterday from Parallax that was so different from what I've ever collected. Um, you know, it just, it, and, and there are so many like Nigerian artists and Iranian artists. I mean, Neda, Neda is just incredible. And I've collected pieces from her. And, um, and of course, Turkish artists and Indian artists, I mean, so many artists around the world, but Nigerian artists are some of the best artists in the world, both photography and painting. And so I've collected a lot from them as well. Um, so, you know, while I would love to collect photojournalism, number one, and street and documentary photography, I will still collect from, um, a variety of artists if their work really um, just, I, I look at it and I just go, wow. Oh, and okay. by the way, I gave you a follow back, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Thank you, thank you. It was a very good question, Adi, thank you. Hi, Vishe, how are you? Hello, hello everyone. Ati, Leslie, dear Magicolor. How are you doing? Great, thank you. How about you? I'm fine. Actually, when I was listening to the Leslie story, <laughs> it was like an open book for me, you know. I, I, I wanted to suggest Leslie that make it a book, write it down. It is really interesting because I have followed you for a long time. But now when I heard your story, everything gets in different for me. And I'll, uh, I also have a suggestion for Ati because Ati is painting uh, the uh, strong woman as an angel. I think you can paint Leslie as one of those angels. <laughs> she deserves it. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. And first of all, I'm so sorry. I, I followed you back. I had no, I, I got, I used to follow everybody back. And then when I hit that 5,000 max where I was following too many and not, and not enough were following me, then I had to catch up. And then it got, I got so far behind that I couldn't keep up with following people back. So I did follow you back and it's, it's been suggested that I do a book. I'm a terrible writer, so I don't know, but um, I, I would like to do a book because I have so many stories for sure um and very emotional stories but um but yeah um someday hopefully or maybe someone you know will do one for me i don't know but uh but thank you and um, i'm so glad you came up so i could follow you back and i do apologize for that no it's okay it's okay i i was uh, uh interested on your works and your collections that's why i followed you for a long time but now uh, as i told you everything gets different when i heard your story and uh, yes for a book if you if you need any help you can count on me and Ati, please please paint leslie as one of those angels of history mm. You're so funny. Uh, it's so funny that you say that because this really sweet artist, I think he's from Nigeria. He, um, I wasn't following him. So his messages were in the message requests. And, and I do check those just in case, cause I don't want to miss someone. And I saw him there and I checked it out before I clicked on it and stuff like that. And, um, he painted this, such a sweet picture of, um, and said such nice words. Um, and it was of me and um, some other collectors and Marianne and stuff like that. And I shared it last night and it was just the sweetest thing. I mean, I just, it was so sweet. I appreciate him so much. Yeah, amazing. Thank you guys. It was amazing. Uh, and <laughs> Leslie, I just remembered uh, an event you went in India. Do you want to say something about that? Because I myself didn't have uh, that much information about it. I just saw that you said you're going to India and uh, I didn't have any idea about that. 
Yeah, so it was called Namaste NFT, and it was um, the biggest e NFT event in India and I think in Southeast Asia. Um, and, um, you know, they asked me to to be on a panel with um, uh, Dilek and Sunny and, and Pascalis and, and Jesse, and, and I'm probably, uh, I don't know, I'm probably leaving off a couple of my minds kind of, uh, in another world right now, but, um, anyway, so yeah, so, um, you know, it was absolutely incredible. I suggest if you ever have a chance to go to one of these NFT events, you do it. Um, I did get COVID afterwards, but it was worth it. Um, because the people, they would come up to me and, um, we would hug each other and it was just, it was like we knew each other forever. And these are memories I will never forget. And friends like Dilek and, uh, and so many others that we just have this connection now that it can't be broken. I mean, there's nothing like it. So um, it was fantastic. Um, they, it was a two-day event, and I was only there for basically three days. Um, so that's a long story, but, um, but yeah, um, it, it was absolutely incredible. And they did come out with, um, uh, they chose 300 artists for their prologue that, um, are on sale now that you can pick up one of these works from. Um, and, um, yeah, it was, it was just, they had, you know, all the screens and everything with our work. And that was the first time I saw in person my work on one of these screens and it was so cool. Um, but, but yeah, it was, it was absolutely amazing. And I highly suggest if you get a chance to go to one of these events, you do it. It's worth it. How about NFT NYC? Do you go to NFT NYC? No, and it's a shame because I have um, several pieces that are going to be there, including one in Times Square. But unfortunately, I will not be able to be there. Um, we have a lot going on right now. My husband has a ton of work to do um, until August. So um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. But I do hope to make it next year because it seems like it's going to be quite the party. Yeah, I see a lot of people going to that this year. It is going to be so big. Uh, despite of this downtrend market, <laughs> people are going there and it, is, it would be so big there. Uh, and uh, I remember a collaboration as uh, we see it in your uh, profile picture. Uh, can you talk about that? Because I remember it had a story you collab, uh, you collab uh, with some uh, photographers and it was a very nice uh, project. Yeah, so um, I got invited in after it already kind of it had a few, it had several artists, quite a few artists in it, and they invited me in. And so um, there were 26 artists um, from 12 different countries and different disabilities. We have an artist there that, um, Houston, who is, um, uh, he has, um, oh, now I can't think of the name of it, Asperger. Asperger's? No, I, I forget exactly what his, his disability is, but he is, he and his mom are just the most amazing people. And we also, he and um, Sabine, it was their Genesis. They had never minted before. So we had some brand new people in there as well. And um, we put out this, uh, we had a, a collector, we had Alpha that was part of it. And he curated it for us and guided us along the way and told us if an image didn't work for him. And um, he, uh, we would have to replace it. And then we had to come up with, you know, uh, great words for the story of it. And um, it was just a huge collaborative effort from all of us and um, our, our curator, Alpha. And um, it was the first time on, on anywhere in the metaverse that on the blockchain, um, uh, Alpha had written notes on each person's piece. And so that was also part of the mint. It was also um, a gotcha mint, which means 
you knew who the artists were and the pictures, but you didn't know which one you were going to get until you bought it. And so Alpha also, for the first time, guaranteed that if anybody wasn't satisfied with the image that they got, that he would buy it back. And um, we ended up selling out in, I think, three days. And we've now added some more people to our, our group. We're going to slowly be adding more and more people um, and, and eventually do an open call as well. Um, but there were people that, you know, had asked about being involved in it. So we, we, we didn't want to add too many at once. So we're, we're trying to do things slowly and build up and eventually hopefully get quite a few more um photographers in there it, it's it's photographers at this point so um but yeah it, it was really great and we have a new curator this time which I, I can't say who it is but i think you will all be extremely excited about this one so um we're going to release a new thing that's going to be coming up that i can't say anything about yet but it'll be coming out in a little while um we're all working on it now and um hopefully that will be as successful um and and yeah, so that's that's what Artists United is. Wow, amazing! So, guys, especially photographers, you should just uh, uh, put the bills on on Leslie because there would be a very nice collaboration. You know, uh, I know the last project it was so amazing. So, I think you should just uh, go by your chance, maybe. This is your chance. Who knows? Okay, Ati, do you have anything? Uh, yeah. Actually, Leslie, uh, yeah, actually, which is right. I mean, you should be one of my angels, and uh, I will, I mean, I will uh, paint you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, another question, Leslie, is, I mean, uh, as a housewife, I mean, uh, most of my problem with these NFTs is that I cannot manage my... Uh, personal life. I mean, as a married woman, as a and the NFT things. I mean, the community and everything is. And as you said that uh, you, uh, you, you, I, I see. I mean, uh, I understand that you, you, you did it very well. I mean, your uh, personal life and your NFT life. How could you please give me a suggestion or anything else about these things? Uh, I really need it. I mean, <laughs> this kind of uh, things. Thank you. If you have any suggestion for me, please. Yeah, and, 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 and I don't, and I'm about to get rugged, I have a feeling, just so, just a fair warning. Um, but can, can everybody, okay, so you can hear me. Um, okay, um, yeah, I mean, I don't have young kids, um, but when, I, I'm minor college and stuff like that, and, um, you know, when they are here, um, I, I make an effort to spend time with them. Um, but, um, I know her, I don't know if you know, Harini, who is a, a beautiful, brilliant photographer and she has, a, you know, young children and, um, she still co-host co spaces, uh, host spaces and everything else. So she finds some time in her day to devote to it. And then the rest of the time is family time. And we all know that. And so we don't expect her to be here 24 seven, um, there's a lot of moms out there and I suggest also you connect with other moms too, that can, you guys can all help support each other. Um, that would be amazing. Um, because there are quite a few moms out there that are doing this and, and dads and, um, you know, you just have to manage your time. But the most, most important thing is to be, um, with your family and that's that should be the number one priority. In fact, part of our Artists United uh, group, one of one of the fathers just had a new baby, his first baby. Um, so, you know, we know that he is taking time with his his newborn baby right now. And that's OK. Um, you know, you need to do that. So you just have to try and figure out how to, to manage your time, maybe to come and spend just, you know, a couple hours a day when the babies are sleeping or when the kids are sleeping or at school or something like that. And take some time and come here and say hello and stuff like that. But you can also schedule tweets and stuff. So you can do that. And, you know, maybe when the kids are asleep, maybe you can join a space or something. But you don't have to be here 24-7. Um, in fact, I don't suggest it for most people. I mean, it's fine 
for me to be here a lot because um, my husband works, you know, and it's mostly just the two of us. Um, My college son is here during the summer, but he goes back and, you know, he's busy working and stuff like that. So um, I, I, I do have a lot of time that I can spend, but that doesn't mean everybody can. So you need to do what's best for you and do things your way. And, and the community will always still be here for you. So don't ever worry about that. And I can't. <laughs> My mic's going off and on, so I don't. I don't know if I'll be able to close it. Sometimes. Oh no problem. <laughs> Let it open because <laughs> questions are coming and coming. <laughs> okay, guys, we are going to uh, wrap it up. And before that, we have. I can't <laughs> just uh, tell your name. Uh, Chain Hot. This is Shaheen. This is Shaheen. Hey. Oh, oh, hi, Shaheen. Hi, Shaheen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice to how meet are you. you. Nice to meet you, Leslie. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and I was so impressed by what uh, Leslie w- uh, were, t- were telling about herself uh, in, the, uh, in the backboard story. And um, here you go. I'm, uh, I'm on your plan. I'm on your plan. Okay, great. So don't you have anything to ask? Uh, uh, I was just trying to uh, let uh, Leslie know that uh, I just entered the foundation after uh, a while because I remember uh, Leslie for uh, 10 or 12 uh, days ago in a, in a space of her uh, with, uh, with uh, Natalie and the Tanya, I guess. Uh, and uh, there were um, uh, a place, some of, uh, some of the speakers uh, grab one of my pieces, and, and I was just wondering that Leslie did it. Did if you remember Leslie, that that was a funniest face that night that I I could I couldn't stop laughing, <laughs> and uh, I just decided to come up and uh, let Leslie oh know God. that. I <laughs> you got oh, right. she's rocking! She's rocking! <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, and. Yeah, maybe you can just uh, message him <laughs> here by that. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have another request, but Mohammed, Leslie is not here. I don't know if she can just uh, come back <laughs> to answer you. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I have such a space with other artists, collectors, and insp- uh, inspiring people in Web3 space. So you can just join me on Saturday and Wednesday. Leslie was uh, my first uh, guest, and uh, it was an honor to talk to her. And uh, it was a very lovely time that I had with her and with you guys. So you can just uh, come back to me, and uh, we will have a lot of uh, awesome guests uh, in the upcoming uh, weeks. So. Just follow uh, me and uh, you can just get more info about that. I will have a lot of fun and a lot of uh, stuff for uh, making your making your community and uh, getting a lot of uh, knowledge and experiences and lots of stuff like that. So does anybody have any questions? Uh, and Shai, hi, Leslie. Hi. Welcome back. I think you and I missed your question. I totally got rugged and I knew it was coming. Yeah, he wanted no actually problem. to know to know if uh, you had collected something from him. Uh, no, maybe no, no, some no, no. Oh, I, I was not. Uh, no, uh, oh, okay, go. <laughs> uh, what I was telling her that uh, I I knew her from a space from her. The, the night was so a kind of funny night. If you remember that night, Leslie, that. Uh, many people came up, and I was uh, making mistakes to understand which which mic is on and uh, which which one of you were yeah, talking. I totally and one, one of this, yeah, one of the speakers t- started to grab one of my pieces, and I thought it was you. And I just started to thank you and a lot of th- things and emotions behind. Oh my God! The, <laughs> the same mistake just happened, Shahi. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. funny. it was so funny, and yeah, because we were buying as as hosts and co-hosts, and yeah, and he, 
you didn't know who it was. It was the, it was so funny. Yeah, as you know, I'm so new into NFTs at all. It's about two or three months, and uh, I just uh, just started to uh, meet my first drop on that foundation for uh, for the for a, after a while uh, with the Ethereum. And uh, I'm now on two platforms as well, uh, Tezos and Ethereum as well. And I just uh, dropped your favorite piece. Uh, I remember that you went to my Instagram account, you told me. Yes, and, it was that um, woman with the red. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a red Cosmos piece. And, and uh, this is uh, my, one of my strongest pieces uh, in my own idea. And uh, I was... Uh, uh, it's uh, for about uh, a year ago uh, it's been created but uh, i just uh, decided to i was not sure to decided uh, about putting it in which kind of platform and, and at the end i just uh, decided for foundation and it's great i really enjoy the platform and uh, i think uh, it works a lot that's awesome congratulations it's a beautiful painting it's it's a painting or a drawing uh, i forget which one uh now it's a painting it's a charcoal basement uh, with some watercolors on the uh, layers of top yes it's so beautiful everybody should go check it out it's it's really a beautiful piece i mean you know as much artwork as i see the fact that i remembered which one it was that says something Correct. Thank you. Thank you for your words. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I will see you on Wednesday, 1030 EST. And we will have uh, another uh, beautiful soul in my uh, space. It was really great. And uh, you can just subscribe uh, my a yeah, newsletter because I will go to publish uh, my uh, discussion with Leslie there as well. So you can just read it and enjoy. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining. Catch you later. Do you have anything for the end, Leslie? Yes, I just wanted to thank you so much for having me on. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for all the questions from people and for everyone for being here. I see so many of my friends here. Thank you all so much. And um, it, it's been it's been wonderful. Thank you. And sorry for rugging. I knew it was going to happen. It happens usually at least once. So <laughs> thank you for putting up with me. Thank you, thank you. Actually, I mostly get right, but <laughs> it was your turn this time. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.